Welcome, Welcome back, back family. family. So new year, new goals, but always the same thing. We want to help you guys. We want to make sure that your journey of becoming a loan officer, becoming a better business owner is nice, simple, and easy. So if you don't know, I'm real Mr. Marcel. I make mortgages simple, easy, and fun. Anyway, family, we have a lot of new subscribers and they come to the channel and they have questions. And one of the most um, unanswered questions that I probably haven't given you guys is how it is in your first year of being a loan officer. So I'm going to go back in time and tell you about my first year and the experiences and what I had to go through, my trials and tribulations. So hopefully it helps you. So when you first become a loan officer, first of all, you have to even know that this position is even around. Like I didn't know about being a broker. I thought that, hey, if you want to become a loan officer, you have to go to a bank, a major realtor, um, major retail bank like Chase, Citibank. And I did banking before. So I always thought, hey, a personal banker was a mortgage broker. I thought it was the same thing. Turns out it's not. Once you become a banker, they offer you the opportunity to become a mortgage banker, right? Or uh, a mortgage lender for the bank. And um, after that, they, they make you do a, a test, a quiz. You have to do some studying and you get what's called the MLS license, but it's through the bank. It's not your own license that carries around with you. Does that make sense? So it's like you're tied to the bank with this license. So if you move from the bank, unless you get it on your own, you actually don't get the license to actually travel and go for it. Does that make sense? Yes. Can you take that license to another bank? Um, usually the way it works when you get it through the bank, the bank gets it and they make you do their own quizzes and they give you an MLS number. Mm. But you're not actually licensed yourself to move around like a broker is. Okay. It's a little different. But then you can also have your own license and tie it to a bank. Because any license you, you get, you do have to tie it with some kind of broker firm. Financial form. institution. Yes, perfect. The word I was looking for, a financial institution. But there's two different two different types, I guess I, I, would, I would say. Mm -hmm. There's one that gets it through the bank directly. And one and, that gets it through the state. Okay. Yes. Well, the, the bank gets it from the state anyway. But it's more tied to the bank, meaning that you only have permission to talk to it because you're, you're affiliated with the bank. Mm -hmm. And then one is for individual. Exactly, individual. Okay. Now, I got the individual one, and I never went through the banking side in that route of it. I just know about it because I worked in a bank, as I said previously. Then once you get that license, then you have to actually figure out, okay, which bank am I going to go for? Because not all people do it how we did it. Like Michelle and I did it. We found the broker firm we went to work for first. And then we got our license because we wanted to know, we know we want a men mentorship, we wanted to get on-hand training, and we wanted them to try to pay for some of the process so it's not everything out your pocket. And if you find a good broker um, firm, they actually will do that. If they believe in you and they see that you, you could become more, they'll be, they're willing to invest in you, and you still have your own license. So that's what the route we took. Now, some people get their license first, and then they pass the test. And then when they, they're doing the licenses, you have to get your fingerprint, you have to run your credit. They um, ask you, hey, what banking firm or institution are you going with? And that's when they decide to look. So it depends on you. I always think it's better to start from the end. Find out which mortgage company, which banking institution you want to go with first. If you want to go to the bank, that's fine. If you want to find a broker, that's fine too. Like I said in other videos, they both have ups and downs. Now, once you do that, you actually submit paperwork. It takes about uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 days to 60 days. Depends on how backed up the banking department is and when you're doing it. If you're doing it during renewal time, renewal is when mortgage loan officers, bankers, brokers, everyone, we have to renew our license. You have to do it every year. So if you're doing your new application during renewal time, they push your file to the end because at the end of the day, the people who are there first come first. And it's a first come first serve business. Mm -hmm. So you might want to be careful not doing it towards the end of the month. If you do, it's going to take longer versus if you're doing the summertime when there's nothing going on anyway, your process will the move along. The end of the year. Yes. End of the year takes longer if you do it during the middle of the year, summer, or even like three months into the year, you have a better chance of getting your license quicker. Mm -hmm. So when I did my test, it was during summer and um, it actually took me about 45 days, I want to say. And I got everything done right there. As soon as I passed, I went and got my fingerprints. Because my broker already told me what stuff I was going to need. So I called the banking department. They gave me another sheet, compared it with his sheet. And I got everything done within a week. And it took about 30, 45 days. They send you a mail, congratulations, blah, blah, blah. You're, um, you're approved. Your license is approved. And um, it was good to go. Yep. Now, my first year was hard. Very hard. <laughs> now, the reason being is 
one, you're talking about something that you've never done before. So I've never really done mortgages before. Uh -huh. As you guys know, we were in real estate, we flipped houses, but doing the mortgage side of it was totally new. When we first started, it's a new position, it's a new field, and people don't know you for this. So now you're coming out to your friends like, hey, guess what, guys? I got my mortgage license. I'm a loan officer. I'm doing mortgages and now. And they're like, like, you got your what? What? <laughs> your what? No, don't you flip houses? You mean you want to buy used houses or something like that, right, Malcolm? No, I also want to help you buy, if you, help you get the financing for your new house. Or if you have a refi, I would love to help get you a lower rate and stuff like that. And they're looking at you, huh? So you're starting to build uh, clients from a field that you've never done before. You got to look for new referral partners. You got to look for how are you going to stand out. You got to do all these things at once. And it's a lot. And you're still learning how to do a process or application because you've never done a 1003. You don't even know what that looks like. You're like, what? I'm supposed to do this? What? Especially if you haven't been in the field, it's a lot harder. Now, if you're a processor that's switching over, it's going to be much easier because you've already been in the banking field. You know what a 1003 is. You know what, what documents you're going to need to do a pre-approval. So you have that little edge, that little, um, what's that little chip on your shoulder that you're just thought, okay, I know a little bit more. That's why I always tell people if you, you think, have an advantage, a learning curve. Yes, advantage and it shortens your learning curve. That's why I always tell people if you're thinking about going in this field, go in and work now. Do it as your part-time gig. Do it for free. Just learn because it's going to help you in the long run. And you're already bringing up. You're already um, gathering clientele and information. Making connections. You're making connections. You're building your database. And people are going to understand that you do mortgages. So when you get your license, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm fully licensed now. Now I can actually do your whole file. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, wow. Okay, that's great. I already trust you. You built that rapport with them. They already trust you. They're ready to give you a business. And you just grow from there. Now, I didn't have that. So we jumped in the, the cold the cold sea. Swimming with the sharks, <laughs> and we was like, "Yo, we're doing mortgages now. Let's go." Michelle was doing it. We was making phone calls. We was calling all our friends, literally going through our phone book, like, "Hey, did you know I do mortgages?" Michelle called friends. Hey, I know I haven't talked to you in a while, but I just want to let you know, me and Malcolm are doing mortgages now, and just started making phone calls, making phone calls. I was actually lucky. Uh, my very first deal did come from a referral from my broker. He was like, "Malcolm, I seen. I think it was three months in. He said, I see you making your phone calls. I was in the office every day, and mind you, I have another full time job." So I was doing the full-time job and still making time to be in the office every day, at least two, three hours, making phone calls, calling everyone in my phone book. Um, I even hate to admit it, but I did one of those, hey, we can give you fresh referrals for mortgages. And I was calling those leads. I was calling anything I could get my hands on just to try to get some clients, get people out there. I was doing Facebook lives. I was... Spent so much money on leads. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> and that's what I'm telling you guys. Buying these leads are usually trash because I've done it. All this is, comes from experience, not because I don't want to see you guys succeed. I'm just telling you the things that I think you want to hear. No, most of the leads out there that you get are going to be trash. The ones that are usually good are like the Facebook targeted marketing. But even then, you have to find a good team that can do it for you or help you with it because not everyone knows what they're doing when it comes to Facebook leads also. Anyway. Um, so we bought a, sh a shit ton of leads that were car horrible. We bought like two, three different companies. So we just started and we're spending about three, four thousand dollars already trying to buy leads, trying to get a deal. Um, we're doing new marketing with Facebook. We're, um, and this is not saying don't invest in, you know, a way to grow your business because leads is an amazing way to grow your business, but just know it's going to, you're going to go through a hundred or so to find a one and, that and that one depends on the company. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we found one and it turned out that it was more of a headache. They had no money, uh -huh. but we were so desperate that we spent a lot of time helping people who weren't qualified. We uh -huh. didn't know how to qualify the leads that we were getting. And that's another thing you're going to learn in the first year of doing mortgages is where you want to spend your time on, because the biggest thing is helping people. But if you can't help them, you wasting your time trying to help them is stopping you from helping someone else who is capable of being helped. A hundred percent. One of the hardest lessons we had to learn that, hey, we have to put people in categories. And that's why I told you what your referral partners, even with your clients, you have to put them in A, B, C, D. These to delete because you can't help everyone. You can keep them on an email drip campaign. You can keep them on some kind of information. Check on them once a year. Tell them, them what advice. they need. Yeah, exactly. tell them what they need to do to get to a B or A client. You know, tell them how, what steps they need to take. And maybe in another two years when their credit is fixed and they have more stable income, you're still, since you're still sending them stuff like emails in your drip campaign, they're still going to have you on their mind as this is a person who helped me get to where I needed to be. So now that I'm ready, I'm going to go to this person exactly. so that they can do my loan. Nine times out of 10, we lose deals because we stop 
communicating with them. And even if they aren't ready, like Jashel said, you give them that information, you keep them on a campaign, you just check in every now and then. Mm -hmm. But you, I don't want you to be spending your full energy on just this one client because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you need to help as many people as possible. So you have to keep going to different people and see where everyone's ready. Are they closing in one to three months? Are they closing in three to six months? Is it going to be a six to nine months? Is it going to be a year or longer? You need to know this information. That's why I'm trying to teach you guys. So our first client was given to us by our broker, thankfully. He saw the hard work that we were doing. He said, you know what, Mark, I want to help you. Here's a client. He took the file. My first time really looking at a file that I'm doing. Like, I had practice on his files. Like, he would help me, show me how to how to talk to them and stuff like that. But one thing about me is I'm a natural talker. So, I started talking. And I made a connection with the client automatically. Because just because someone says, hey, this is someone who wants to buy, doesn't mean it's going to be a good fit for you. Because the client could be like, oh, you know what? I didn't like him. I didn't like how he talked to me. I didn't like what he said. I didn't like what he knew. Blah, blah, blah. And one of the things that I did is what everyone says to go against is I admit it. I was like, hey, you know, um, I'm pretty new to this. Um, you're going, I didn't say you're going to be my first client, but I said I've worked on some other files before, but you're going to be my first client that I try to do by myself, but my broker will be helping me. And she was a sweetheart. She's like, don't worry. I love your energy. I love that you're being honest with me. Let's do this together. I'm buying my house. This is going to be my first house. Your, your first loan that you're doing by yourself. Let's do it together. Uh, a lot of people talk against that, but I like being honest. I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, um, I'm new to this. I'm willing to learn, and I just showed my passion. And I said, yeah, I did work on all the files, which was true, but this was the first one I did by myself. And it actually turned out to be amazing. So we still talk today. I call it every anniversary, birthdays, and stuff like that. I created a connection because at the end of the day, you don't want to just them be your client. You want them, no, is it customer? You don't want them to be a customer. You want mm -hmm. them to be a client. And I make, I take it a step further. They're not just my client. They're my family now. Yep. So I added on that personal touch. I call them for birthdays. I send them a little card. It takes two seconds to say happy birthday thinking about you. Mm -hmm. That's so it. Christmas, Christmas gifts. Christmas gifts. Like, Christmas gifts. Although we're not like doing business together right now. We did before, and I still have a connection to you. So. And you never know what referrals could come out from that. Mm -hmm. So it's always a long-term plan. You're playing chess, not checkers. Now, another thing I want you to understand is, like, even my first deal was a headache. Um, tax return issues was on it. Bad credit. We had to put it in credit repair. That ended up taking another, what, two months. And during this time, I'm still communicating with her. As I realized, like, hey, she needs more help. I have to put her in... She has to deal with her taxes issues. I'm not going to spend talking to her every day, but once a week, I would still communicate, hey, did, did you send all the tax documents? Hey, is the credit being reported? How is the credit repair person that we were using at the time, how is he treating you? Do, you? do you need anything? Like once a week, I was still touching in. And in this meantime, I'm still going door to door to a realtor's office, introducing myself, seeing what I could do with them giving out Dunkin' Donuts gift cards. Yes, I stood out front of the office and said, hey, if you have any more questions, I would be more than happy to help you. Here's a free $5 Dunkin' Donut card on me. Have a good day. While I'm giving out my business cards, I was still going door knocking, still me an attorney, still me in tax accountants, while I'm still working on my only client right now at this time. And then boom, six, seven months later, we finally closed this house. She was more than ecstatic. She couldn't believe it her first time closing. She has so many issues. Other loan officers turned her down because they didn't want to deal with the problems. Mm -hmm. And I said, forget it, I'll deal with it. We'll go through it together. And not only did I learn a lot, but I was also able to make a family. And she gave me two to three referrals later on because of the connection, how hard I worked. And then at this time, it's been a year, and it's like, that took me seven months, but all the times I was still working, five days a week, seven days a week, doing open houses, and I hate open houses. Any of the realtors that I work with now can tell you I don't like open houses. I'm like, Malcolm, you wanna come to this open house? Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you really need You don't even have a loan officer? Like, I'm not a fan of open houses. That's, that'll be another video. But during those times, still grinding, still grinding, seven months later, I finally closed my first deal, but all that work, led me to close what in the first year i think we did about eight or nine deals mm -hmm. so in the remaining what that's four mm -hmm. yeah, my math is not too bad right four in the last four months of the year we end up doing another six seven deals in four months mind you it took me seven months to get my first deal done so that just goes to show you that it's all about consistency it's not about where you start it's about how you finish and how you keep growing. Because at the end of the day, you never want to finish. This isn't something that you say, okay, I'm master mortgages. No, I'm still learning. Yeah. I still have coaches. I literally have a coach that helps me with my mortgage. Every month, I have a coach helping me with my Facebook leads. And there's always new regulations and laws coming mm -hmm. out. So. so always. That's why it's continual education. Why we have to take a new class every year to continue our education. Because at the end of the day, the laws are changing, like Michelle said. And you want to make sure you're always on one step ahead of the game. And that's why I'm proud of you for investing in yourself. 
yourself and watching these YouTube videos because this is how you're going to grow your business. So it took me seven months. I just want to repeat that to close my first deal. So if it took me that long, if you're taking my videos and listen to what I'm saying, you're going to do it in half the time. It take, might take you three, four months. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It takes you a year. At the end of the day, you're growing your business if you do it the right way. And that's study referrals. You want to keep it going. And if you do leads, be careful what leads you do. Minimize your budget. Make sure you, you optimize for three months. Give it at least three months before you quit. And make sure you have enough budget. One thing I still struggle with is I always say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then two months in, I'm like, oh, shoot, this ain't working. Uh -huh. I have a hard time holding down to the yes, three months. Yes, he does do that. <laughs> so you guys, make sure you budget, put it aside. And if you want to do it, go for it. And like I always say, you can do anything you want. If you have more questions, feel free. This is about watching loan processors. If you want to know more information about loan processors and what they go through. And this is if you have any more information about mortgages, you can click right there. And watch all my videos talking about mortgages and different questions like that. Thank you, family. I appreciate you. This is The Real Mr. Marcel. Have a wonderful day. See ya. Over and out. Boom.